Hey, Saltbox Stitcher, Carol. Um, I'm back. <laughs> I always say, oh, I'm sorry it's been so long, and I don't know. It just, it just takes me a while to, like, get everything going for a video, so I'm sorry. <laughs> or not, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we're not supposed to say I'm sorry. It is what it is. So, um... I did have a few people that have reached out to me and kindly said, where are you? <laughs> I'm here. I'm in Jacksonville. Um, I can't even say it's been a crazy few months. I, I know one thing for sure is that I um, delayed a, having a video a little bit because um, I really wanted to finish... Um, the Eliza Mitchell sampler, which I did, and I'll show you that in a minute. But, um, you know, I kind of feel like if I have one really often, I'm not going to have anything to show you. And I like to have it all about stitching. I mean, I could spend hours talking about my kids, my family, but, you know, that gets boring too. So um, we're all here for stitching, and so that's kind of, you know, why I wait till I can have enough to show you. So um, I think I'm going to start by showing you a few vintage. Um, these are things I did eons ago. I don't know. Um, the first one, I know this is Cross-Eyed Cricket. Cross-Eyed Cricket was really popular late 80s, mid 80s, 90s. I mean, it's still popular, so I didn't I don't mean to mean it's not anymore, but um it was it really appealed to me because it was kind of um had a lot of similar uh, to what my style, some folk art and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um there was a alphabet sampler. I never made the whole sampler, but I did do different elements or different letters of the sampler. I think I did one for my sister that said like welcome on one side or home on one side, not home on the other. I don't know what it said. It was a little pillow and she hung it on her closet, her um, hall closet door, but I can't remember what it said. But anyway, open and closed. It was one thing on one side and one thing on another. Boy, I am really rambling. Anyway, I did this for my daughter. L was obviously for lamb. And I did her name. And it was a little purse. It's been around the world and back. I mean, this child used it a lot. And I should make one for Camille. I don't even know if they still make these. This was pre-made, the purse or the little tote was pre-made but girls you know when they're like four or five they love to collect stuff and she used to put those little pocket dolls in here so anyway that was fun I know it's cross-eyed cricket I can't tell you what number or anything like that but it's one of the ones that they did that had an alphabet this is another one I did the frame is really beat up I'm thinking it's fallen off of the wall a few times because it's I keep it now in the toy room I think it's also cross-eyed cricket um I guess I was into sheep <laughs> still like sheep um I think they're really cute the lord is my shepherd I love it's cute and I I hang it now in the I call it the toy room it's got the bunk beds and the toys for the kids when they come to stay we had a whole weekend of kids. <laughs> we had Camille on Friday night and Elijah. Camille's three, almost four. Elijah's five, almost six. And um, when you have them together, they can kind of bicker with each other. So I had one one night and one the other night. So it was a weekend of play. <laughs> these are two others that I did. And these, um, I have no idea. Um, I, have, I just have no idea where they were from. But they're bunnies. And I, I still think they're adorable. 
You have Mr. and Mrs. Bunny, or brother and sister, who knows. Um, I just thought they were really cute. When I originally did my daughter's nursery, it was that country blue and uh, country pinkish rose and then that kind of green. Those were popular colors. So to me, these are t kind of timeless. I still have them out. Um, Easter-ish, Easter time-ish. But during the year, they hang in the toy room. So um, those that's what I have for vintage. Um, I have some other things, but um, I'll show them another time. Um, and then I thought I'd show you my two framed pieces that I got back. Now, I had these framed at um, Heart's Desire, which is my sister's local needle workshop in Wichita, Kansas. And um, the owner is Deb, and she does a fabulous job framing. I've taken things there, or I've sent her things and then picked them up while I'm there, or I've taken things and then um, had her send them to me. So this is the first one, and I think y'all... Well, I know I showed this. It was a mania start, and then I finished it during last year, and then I just got it back from being framed. Um, this is Sarah Turner, and this is by, oh my, <laughs> I'll think of it in a minute. It's an older chart, and my mind just went blank, and I didn't write it in my notes. Anyway, this is the same designer that did this big one back here the lord is the good shepherd oh, i can see it i just can't think of it so that was one that i got back from being framed i actually have four others that are uh in transit they called me saturday and said they were putting them in the i think they're going to come ups so hopefully i'll do another video in the next couple weeks because i'll get those probably today or tomorrow and then I'll have four more framed ones to show you. This is the other one I had framed from Heart's Desire. This is Ann Peg. And this was by the Scarlet House. And I did a silk conversion. Um, one of the gals I know from Orlando who, who used to own a quilt shop. Um, I follow her on Instagram, Carol Crago, and she was at the attic and decided to do a um, silk conversion. So I had the attic send me the silks too. So this is Anne Peg by the Scarlet House, all framed. Um, I like these primitive frames. They're by Eastside Moldings, and um, not every shop that does framing carries them, but the one in Wichita does, so, and Peg, the Scarlet House. Um, the next frame thing I wanted to show you, I know a lot of people are doing a stitch along with Matter's Choice. Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches, I think she's kind of hosting or I think it was, had to do with her birthday, and age doesn't matter. I did not stitch this. A friend of mine stitched it for me um, as a gift, but I did frame it, and I framed it myself. I didn't do a great job, but it's satisfactory. I actually got the frame at Hobby Lobby. One of the main problems I have with doing my own framing is um well the stretching i think is difficult because i pin i don't lace but um when you order a frame and you give them a measurement and let's say you measure let's say you measure okay i want a half an inch or i want an inch or whatever and i never know whether to measure the outs 
this opening here or whether to measure the inside opening that includes that little, um, whatever it's called, the little extra that they give you to that holds the actual piece. But this is Matter's Choice. This is by, um, I think this is Kathy Barrick. But a lot of people are doing this now. And my friend did it. It's kind of a blackish blue. I think it's Blackboard by Gentle Art. I think that's what thread she used. But I love it. I keep it hung. But anyway, what I started to say is sometimes when I order a frame and then I measure once I get the frame and it's sometimes different than what I ordered. I've never really taken any of them back because they're close enough, but I feel like it's not as precise as I'd like it to be. So anyway, um, those are my vintage and my framed pieces. The other thing that I, I will show you my finishes in just a second, but the other thing I wanted to um, announce, da -da -da -da, drum roll, is the winner because last time, if you'll remember at the end of January, Kitten Stitcher decided to do a sale on charts that I had picked out as my favorites. Now, I don't own all of them, nor have I stitched all of them. I've stitched some, but not all of them. And um, so anyway, she wanted to gift me for doing that with a um, $50 credit or gift certificate or whatever to her shop. And I, I just didn't want to take that. I thought that was too much. So I decided to use her 50 plus I would put in 50. So whoever wins would get a $100 um, credit or gift certificate to kittenstitcher.com to her shop. And um, so I cut up, I had my husband print and I cut up all the, I can't do <laughs> random number generator. That's like way out of my comfort zone. I, I, I'm sure it's just an app and you put it in and then you type in all the names, but I, I'm, I do just as well with the scissors. And so then I drew a name and that name is Yvette Gonzalez. So Yvette, you are the winner of a hundred dollar gift certificate to kittenstitcher.com. So if you will send me a private message, I will give you the special code. And then you can email Teresa at, um, I think her email is Shakespeare's Peddler um, at AOL. I'm not 100% sure of that. So um, when you private message me and I give you the code, I'll also give you the um, email. And then you can pick out what you want and send those in an email to her and she will send them out to you. How fun. I think that's great. Okay, the next, um, this may not be that long of a video because like I said, I just feel like I really haven't had that much to talk about. Um, I've mentioned before when I work on a sampler, I generally will work on it till it's finished. Um, I think if I get bored or kind of meh about a sampler, especially a bigger sampler, if I put it down, I'm probably not going to want to pick it up again. Um, that's just me. I know a lot of people put things in timeout, and I actually have put something in timeout. I put and they send in timeout for a little while. That's not a big deal to me because I know I want to eventually finish it. Um, I'm just not super, super happy with the colors of the floss on the color of linen that I picked. So I'm going to a number of retreats where I can have the opportunity to really look at some threads and compare. 
And so I think I'm going to put it in timeout until I can do that. And then I want to pick out some colors that are close to the what's called for, but maybe a little bit more subdued. I feel like some of the colors are kind of bright, and that's not me. So anyway, so that's why I've put that in timeout. But generally, what I was saying was I will work on a sampler until it's finished. It's just me. So the first one that I finished, did I show you this already? I don't know if I showed you this. I know I put it on Instagram. But I finished uh, the Pink House sampler. Sorry, this got wrinkled again when I put it in a stack to show. Um, this is the Pink House Sampler, and this is by Plum Street. And she has Mary Jane Carver, 1899, which I think was a relative. Um, I don't claim to be any kind of an expert about samplers. I like when they look old. Some are reproductions, and some are designed to look like a reproduction. If it's designed to look like a reproduction, I don't have a problem putting my own relative's name. If it's an actual reproduction, I will generally put the name of the girl that originally stitched it. In other words, copy, not copy, but mirror or mimic the um, the actual antique. This one right here is a blackbird. And the original one, I want to say was Louisa Bell, but I'm not sure about the name of that. But it, it's in a book by Blackbird. And... Um, Blackbird put their own name of a relative. And so they did not put the original girl who stitched its name. And I think since they changed, then I felt okay changing it myself. So that's kind of an exception, I guess. I don't know. But the original, I, I think it's Louisa Bell Cox, maybe. It's something like that. They made theirs say Hannah Lavinia. My great grandmother was Anna Lavonia, which is so close that I decided to put my great grandmother in the year of her birth, which was 1869, 1889. I don't know. Anyway, this one is my grandfather's mother. Her maiden name was Fields, and then when she married my great-grandfather, the last name Thompson, she was born in 1866. If I showed you this already, I'm sorry. I need to probably watch my most recent video before I do one. That would be painful. <laughs> anyway, so that's um, one of the things I... The samplers I finished. I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was really fun. It wasn't my very, very favorite. Um, I have some samplers that absolutely I am like a dog with a bone. I just want to finish them because I love them. I think they're wonderful. And in fact, one of the pieces that I have coming back from being framed is um, Rachel Howell by the Scarlet House. And I know I've showed you that before. It has the big birds and the beautiful red flowers all the way around the border. And so I'm anxious to get that one back from being framed. But the next one, and this, this sampler got a little tedious. Um, it doesn't have a lot of colors. And so in that respect, it felt like it was a little bit boring to stitch because I'm, you know, all of it was kind of monochromatic. Um, there was quite a bit of over one, which I've told you before is not my favorite because it's slow going for me because I'm working with a hoop or a Q-snap, whatever. 
because over one, I think has you have to have that really tight. So it's very difficult to stitch it in hand and have your stitches show up even halfway nice. So anyway, I did finish this. I don't know. I posted on Facebook. I mean, Instagram. Um, it's been within the last couple of weeks. And I'm so pleased with it that it's done. I think once it's framed and I... I think it's going to be one of the next few that I send to get framed. And when I send this, I'm going to send this one to Total Framing, which is in uh, Virginia. I know there's other people on Instagram that use Total Framing. They're very good about sending you a text with their choices, you know, and if you say, well, none of those work for me, then they'll send you more choices. And one of the gals, I, it's Sherry and Terry, and I believe Sherry is a stitcher. And um, that and the one, the gal from Heart's Desire in Wichita, she's a stitcher. I just feel personally like if a stitcher frames my piece, they're going to understand, you know, following a linen thread to straighten it and stretching it and all of that. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know but that's just my personal opinion. So this is, um, I think that other one, Sarah Turner was Mildred and Mildred. I'm thinking <laughs> that just came in my brain. Did you ever do that? You're like, cannot think of something, cannot think of something. And then you'll like random at a completely different time. Oh, that's the answer. <laughs> People, you're nuts. But I know it happens to other people besides me. So other people are nuts too. Anyway, this is Eliza Mitchell by Lottie Da. I'll, here's the pattern. This is the antique on the front of the pattern, I believe. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell and sometimes it's real obvious which ones are the antiques and which are uh, the ones that they've stitched as a reproduction. First of all, wasn't thrilled with the fabric. This is 40 count weeks Confederate gray and the 40 count just, there's a lot of um, variation in the, in the strands of the actual threads that make up the linen. And some of them are like as thin as a hair. I mean, they're really, so you really, first of all, you have to really be careful with your count because it's easy to stitch three threads instead of two. Um, and you can see what I mean. The colors are kind of, you know, greens and tans. When I originally pulled the colors, I thought, oh, well, there's some reds. There's very little pinkish red. There's some on those flowers. And there's a little bit on that middle border. There's quite a bit of over one. There's six, six lines of over one. Plus, you have her name and the year. What I did, and on 40 count, I feel like I kind of have permission to do this. My own permission. <laughs> I love when people have come up with their own idea and then they make their own rules and then they force themselves to follow their own rules. I love it. I have a friend like that. She just is like, well, I'm doing this, you know, quilt and blah, 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 blah. And here's the rules. And I can't do that because that wouldn't be following the rules. It's like, didn't you set up the rules yourself? Oh, well, <laughs> I guess I'm allowed to do that too. Anyway, on the name, Eliza Mitchell, age 11 years, 1824. I did a full cross on those over one. And it got so tedious and I was losing stitches. They were kind of bumpy and I just was like, I, this is not, and I'm not going to rip out over one. That is like torture. So when I did the actual verse, I just did a tent stitch, which is half. So consequently, the name is darker 
because obviously it's a full cross, and up here it's a half a cross, the verse. I'm okay with that because her name is what I would want to emphasize anyway. Now, if I'd done it the opposite and did the whole verse with a full cross and her name with a half cross, I, I don't think I'd like that. So to me, it almost looks like it's just a different, a darker thread rather than, oh, that's a full cross and that's a half cross. But I think once it's framed, it's going to look really old. It's going to look like an antique. You know, the flowers are kind of funky. It, it, there was a lot of stitching to this. A lot of stitching. So it, it took me a little while to finish it. I think when I, f I, I started this in Mania. And I did a portion of the border and a portion let's see if I can do this, of this here. And um, this inner border is very similar to the outer border on Sarah Red Redfern. It's got these flowers that have like a double. Let's see. You can see it maybe better on this. It's like double. There's like one row and then a second row behind it. So it just it just is tedious. But I love the this basket of flowers right here. To me that would make a nice small right there. I think that's really pretty. But it's done. Praise the Lord it's done. <laughs> because I was like over it. So then I said, okay, since that one got a little tedious, maybe I should change up my whole strategy on samplers. Um, it sort of made me have wipe. <laughs> what is wipe? Wipe is whip envy. W-I-P envy. E. Wipe. Or whippy. <laughs> Because I see other people and I'm thinking, okay, now they're probably not stitching one sampler at a time. They're probably doing, you know, two or three at a time. I could not handle doing a rotation. That's just not me. And a random rotation, I would be nuts. <laughs> Nuttier. Because I don't, I don't want a rotation that tells me, Okay, today you have to stitch da 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 because I guess I'm just um I don't know, self-centered, <laughs> crazy, I don't know, to where I don't I don't I don't want some app telling me what to stitch. So in my um pursuit of how to do my next few samplers and combined with whip envy and combined with I will call it SED Stitching easily distracted. <laughs> I decided to start two or three or four or five. Manageable. Okay, so one of the reasons I like to stitch a sampler continually is because I've, I've mentioned before. That way I'm kind of like... I remember, you know, I memorize the symbols for each color thread and I see a triangle and I know that's whatever. And so it's easy to like progress because you get into a motion, you finish motifs and, you know, that's kind of an accomplishment, you know, and I always do my border first, always. Because I like the idea of knowing that it's going to meet before I do segments. If Because there's been times where my border didn't meet. And so I figure, okay, if I did a section or a middle band with motifs and I come around and my border didn't meet, then you have the dilemma, do I take out those? No, you don't. So then you have to just make it work. And I don't like that. So... All of that to say, you guys want to see me again. <laughs> so you got to listen to my rambling. <sighs> Some of you are like, why did we ask for this? <laughs> all that to say, first of all, I started Red Deer 
And I've talked about red deer over and over. And I said, it's high time. This is one of those where the picture, and I think GGR, for the most part, puts the picture of the antique. And I've mentioned before, it's easy to look at this and say, oh, that looks really not very cute. But it is. Trust me. You have to have sampler vision. So here is the start of, sorry for the wrinkles, but not really, because I stitch in hand. This is the start of the red deer. The border is very symmetrical in that, you know, once you count a whole section, it stays true to it, and you can just go, go, go. Now, because I didn't want to show you just a border, I did a couple flowers. This one actually is, um, I think that's Lexington green, so it kind of fades in, but that's that's fine. So I did a couple of flowers so that you could get the idea that this is really going to be a beautiful sampler. And to do a Nicole's needlework, she's so good at this. Floss. Here are all of the colors. So there's going to be some vibrant colors, and the deer is in my favorite. Here it is, Schoolhouse Red. And on that linen, which by the way is, I can't remember if it's 36 or 40, I think it's 36 count Cedar Plank by Lakeside Linens. Pretty. Very pretty. So, number one, I started. I worked on that, and I'm keeping very good track in my journal. I worked on that for maybe two or three nights. I didn't want to switch because of my past way of doing things. I, I made myself switch, which is okay. And keep in mind... I use rings and I put a little thing like this, which I got at Joann's. I do it in pencils as a red deer sampler. It's in the paper um, scrapbooking section where they have all this good type stuff. And then when I'm done with it, I erase and I use them again. So that next one that I decided to do is and this is where I get stitching easily distracted because if I see somebody that I follow that does a lot of samplers and they have this finished and framed and on their wall Brenda <laughs> I get like oh, I have that and I have it kitted and so all I have to do is surge the edges and I can start that that's what goes on in my brain so the next one is Sarah Unwin. Now this one was a stitch along through country sampler. I think she released this at market. I think. Not 100% sure. I know she released a section of it. I saw somebody that there was another pattern that's just, you know, if you want to do just part of a sampler. I like that idea. I think that's cool. But because my last one that I did did not have a red house. I was in red house withdrawal. <laughs> yes, I do have a red house. My house is red brick. <laughs> so I was like, okay, number one, there isn't any over one in this. So, and there isn't any over one in red deer. So these were kind of my rules <laughs> that I set up myself that I had to follow. So Red Deer has no over one. Sarah Unwin has no over one. I don't think. No, all of this is just straight crosses. There may be an over one a little bit in a motif, but that's not a big deal. So, and it has a red house. So this is sampler number two that I started. Sarah Unwin. And This is how far I've gotten. 
So the border's done all the way around. This is going to be fairly big. This is 36 count. It was a kit. Um, <laughs> Vintage Pearl Barley by Lakeside Linen. I love Lakeside. And after I, I, I like Weeks, and I've done a lot on Weeks, but that high count, 40 count, Confederate Gray was like, oof, not my favorite. Excuse me. Born and raised. Go Cardinals. Anyway, Sarah Unwin. I went ahead and did a couple flowers just for y'all. I never used to say y'all. How both my kids say y'all. Y'all could see it. So you guys could see it. So it's going to be gorgeous. And if you want to see it finished, framed, go to Brenda Sampler Stitcher on Instagram. It's gorgeous. That's sampler number two. Oh. Floss toss. Once again. Love the red. This particular red is Lancaster red, which is probably a second favorite by weeks. The schoolhouse red that I used in that I'm using in Red Deer is um, Gentle Art. A little bit of pink, beautiful greens. It's a deal. I'm doing it. Sarah Unwin. So I thought, well, it's two enough, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, candy, M&Ms are two enough. Would three even be better? <laughs> Who eats three M&Ms? Not me. I had to stop buying. I'd like to have a little bit of chocolate around the house. Not that I need it because I don't, but occasionally everybody likes just, or most people, or normal people. <laughs> Like a little bit of chocolate. So the best for me, because I try to follow uh, WW, formerly Weight Watchers, um, is to have the little candy kisses. They're pre-wrapped. You just have a certain amount. Eat two. It's like manageable. But my husband forgets where the trash can is. So he grabs a group of them. Then he takes the wrapper and sticks it in his pocket. So then I do laundry and I have all these little silver balls. <laughs> this is my life. This is my life that I live. I have all these little aluminum foil silver balls <laughs> in the wash. It's like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I just can't. So I started buying M&Ms. So we have a little bit of chocolate. But M&M's are really hard just to have one or two. So then you end up eating six or seven or eight or nine. And it's like, I, I can't do that. So if I buy candy kisses, I stash them. And I put M&M's out for him. And hopefully I'm not tempted. The next one that I said, okay, let's, let's, let's go for three. I did four, but I meant three. With arthritis, that's getting harder to do. So, once again, I have Whip Envy, Stitching Easily Distracted, <laughs> and I saw Faye Rigsby, Carolina Stitcher, and she just finished, or is she working on? I think she's working on Martha Pudsey by Scarlet House. And Nicole's Needlework also did this and framed it. And so it's like, why is this languishing in my pile? So I decided I would start it. Doesn't have a red house, but it has an Adam and Eve, has some great reds. Why not? So this one I started last night. And this one, let's see where I am. This is how I start. Because I usually start in the upper left hand corner. So this is how far I got last night on the border, which 
the border is consistent by each side. So in other words, once you count one side, you can go, go, go. But then when you get to the next side, you have to recount because it may be different. This is actually what it calls for, which is the Vintage Autumn Gold by Lakeside Linens, and this is 40 count. It's dark. It's darker than a sand dune. This is actually a double dyed linen. It's gorgeous. And every when I started stitching it, and I'm stitching it with um, needlepoint silks, which is what it calls for. And I started stitching it, and I was like, hmm, this red is a little, oops, here, here, no, that's not it. It's a little pinky. But then I realized on the pattern, there's two rows of red with a green in between. So once I finish the first go round, the second, and third will be just following it. I won't even have to look at the chart. That's mindless. You know, you just go, go, go. So, and that's why it appears darker in the picture because it has two rows of red with green in between. So the colors kind of blend. So, hmm, is three enough? Should I go for four? Well, let's just see. This one I actually did not think, oh, I'm going to start this. This one, I went to a stitching group, and at the time I was working on Eliza Mitchell, and I was like, there is no way I want to take this with me because 40 count, I knew it would be hard, people would be talking, and it was like, okay, I need to start something simpler. So, hold on. The other thing I wanted to say about Martha Pudsey is it has a little tiny bit of over one, but um, not a whole lot. So anyway, the next one that I had started in my stitching group was um, one by Brenda Gervais, Sampler Hill. I've had this for a while, and I had it kitted up with all of the called for. And it actually calls for a linen called corn silk. And mine, corn silk, was very yellow-green. But I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to try it. And then the border, the vine border that goes around was like avocado, I think, by um, Classic Color Works. And I just, on that yellow-green, it was just too much yellow-green. So I thought, well, I really want it to look like the picture, which is more muted. So I changed a lot of the colors. And at some point when I finish it, I will give you a list of what I changed. Because right now I'm not 100% sure I'm going to stick with what I've changed it to. But I went with colors that were a little bit more muted more my colors I like the blue I stayed with that I think I changed I know I changed um, I changed the outer border to endive the leaves to putty so um, when I get all that done but here's my start so I'm working on just a second I've gone all the way around. There's a B-skep in the middle here, so you don't really have to have your border meet, and it's a manageable size. It actually looks light here, but it's a, it's a little bit darker. So I think it'll go fairly fast. But So obviously I changed the linen to Old Town Blend by R&R, &R, 36 count, and I'm changing some of the colors. So I want it to look more like the picture. So it's number four. And it has a house. It's not a red house, but it has a red roof. So that kind of counts. And then the other one that I'm going to start, 
um, where is it? I've wanted to do this for a while. And this is ale, 36 count ale by Picture This Plus. And it's this fabulous pattern, Samplers, by Scarlet House. So I'm going to start this one in the next couple days. And then what I'm going to, and oh, here's the colors for that. The red in this one is Ruby Slipper. And then it has the black, which is black licorice. It's very pretty. Um, now, all that to say, that's probably, that's probably a rotation. <laughs> but I still have choices, you know, like, okay, let's say it's a night we go to my grandson's baseball game. I don't even start stitching till nine o'clock. I usually stitch till one ish, sometimes one thirty, sometimes midnight. It just depends on, you know, if my eyes are continuing to see and not on me. And, you know, I might decide I'd rather work on one of the smaller ones. Or maybe I'm close to, you know, getting the border finished. And so I'm like, okay, I don't have a, I only have a few hours, but I'm still going to work on a border. So those are all like in my head that'll make up my choices. So that's where I am with all that. And then the other one that I'm going to work on, and I've showed you this before, this is uh, Chessie and Me, Esther Idison. This does have some over one, and, but it has a red house. And I have quite a bit of this finished, but not enough to say even half. But the border's finished. Part of the top motifs are done, and the house is done. And this is done on, uh, ooh, I think, a lakeside linen. Or maybe, I'm not sure. It's 36 count, I know that. So that'll be my other part of my rotation. <laughs> if I get a chance, I'm also going to start Mary Lindley. And this one, uh, I just watched... Nicole's Needlework, and um, I have watched her. In fact, I went back and watched all of, she's one of the ones I watched from the very, you know, I jumped in in the middle, then went back and watched all of them from the beginning because she does much of the same um, designs as I like. She loves samplers. Um, she does Blackbird. She does Scarlet House. Um, she does some Scarlet Letter. She's... She's a prolific stitcher. And um, I watched her, I think it was her most recent video, and she showed this was one of the ones that she had finished and eventually wants to get framed. She had some she showed that were, gone, she was immediately going to get framed, and then some that she was showing that she eventually wants to get framed. So anyway, um, this one's not large. It does have some over one. Um, the fabric that I'm using is 40 count Meadow Rue. This is too big of a piece, but I'm going to cut it down once I get the border done. And then um, it's Belsois and one NPI. Belsois by Classic Color Works. Oh, and there's also a Gloriana. So I think there's a Gloriana. I this this is the same um, threads that are also on another Scarlet House, and I had them in the same bag and the same thing. So what am I going to talk about next? I'm very, um, 
getting too old <laughs> to be imagining that I'm going to be stitching all this stuff, but I'm still, I'm hanging on to hope. So I'm not going to show you all this because you will think I'm nuts. But I went ahead and um, went through some things that I'd really like to stitch this spring. <laughs> I have to make myself laugh. I'd like to stitch this spring. And I, some of them I had kitted, some of them I went ahead and kitted. And, you know, I cut the linen to size. I pulled all the threads if I didn't have them all. And I um, surged the edges of the linen. I've had a serger for eons. And I put them in a basket. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh at me. So this is my basket of, and a lot, uh, some of them are small. Um, I'll pick a few and show you. This is with thy needle and thread peep parade. That would be fun to stitch. And some of these I might take with me like when I go on a retreat because they're manageable. This is um, needle and thread, friend of Gervais. This is scattered seed, spring gathering. And some of these would go fairly fast. Um, this is Life on Sampler Hill, Scarlet House. May change that to red. I saw somebody had changed it to red. Or not. I don't know. This is Lady Liberty by with a needle and thread. This is not very big. It looks like it would be bigger, but it's not. Um, and this, somebody had written a comment that they were really disappointed I hadn't started this yet, American Sampler, but I want to start that because I want that done. I want to work on that for sure by summer. Um, here's another sampler. Hester Kingham, Hingham, Hester Kingham. I always thought it was, yeah, it's Hester Kingham by Samplers Revisited, Red House. The reds are sticking out. This is also done with needlepoint silks. And this one also does not have any over one. The verse and all that is um, one over two. And the last one I'll show you is another one that's a red house, no over one, Jane Stanwicks, also by Samplers Revisited. This was a kid, I got some country sampler. So, those are my plans. Um, I thought I would insert a couple pictures of quilts that I have done over the years. These are two of the primitive applique quilts that are some of my favorite. The f one of them is by Jan Paddock and the other one that has uh, that's a little bit bigger um, is by Country Threads and they are no longer in business. I know she has a blog and if you would send her a letter she might, or an email, she might um, still be able to give you the patterns. It was a block of the month. It was called Summer, Summer Block of the Month, something like that, by Country Threads. So I'll insert those here. And then um, I have a couple other quilts, small ones. These are pictures of my kits that I got from Temecula. This this one I have cut out. I just need to piece it. This one I just got in like in the last couple days. I guess it goes this way. I also have one cut out that is a kit. Got it all cut out. 
put in a little tin. And it is this one, Scrappy Chevron. Looks like my brain. Every one of these is a different sampler that my brain is going. Oh yes, we can do that. Oh yes, we can do that. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> um, wanted to say one thing about Market. I thought Market looked fabulous. Um, I still have more videos that I want to watch um, from Market. I pre-ordered people said well, what did you buy what did you buy I pre-ordered all of the with thy needle and thread uh, her designs are she's very very creative she's probably one of the most one of the most creative people in the needlework market one there's more than one but she's one of them so I pre-ordered all of those I pre-ordered um, I think every one of the new Kathy Barrick, love those, love the big stockings. I have collected some of her long stockings, and I have yet to do one, but I think they're fabulous. I pre-ordered some of the Plum Street. I think a couple of the Plum Street maybe had been um, club pieces, and so I already have them. I pre-ordered all of the new, the three new Blackbird books. One of them, I actually have a pat, the pattern, but it has other things in the book, so I've got to have that. I will order um, Kitten Stitcher's new pieces. I think her Savior's Praise is absolutely to die for fabulous. There again, one of the most creative people out there. And she's my BFF, so... If you look at the border on a Savior's Praise and just look at all the elements that she has put just in the border, it it's amazing. It's amazing. So um, I know there's other sampler patterns out there. I am going to, in April, I'm going to the Dying to Stitch Retreat at the end of April. In May, I'm going back to the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat. In June, I'm on a waiting list for a country sampler retreat. I don't know if I'll get into that one. In August, I got into the Attic Summer School, which I am over the moon about because that is definitely on my bucket list. And then in October, I'm also going to the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat. And that one will be in Iowa, not in Minneapolis. So I know that I'll see samplers at the attic. I'll see samplers at Dying to Stitch. So I did not pre-order any of those because, you know, I know I'll see lots and lots of samplers. So that's kind of where I am. Um, I did get... I got, I got a couple of patterns. I don't have them out here. Um, Oh, I also pre-ordered a couple of the Hands Across the Sea. Yet to do one, but love those charts. I think they're fabulous. The other thing I wanted to show you, and if you watch Nicola's um, Hands Across the Sea, that tab the table makes a noise, so I'm sorry. If you watch her uh, floss tube, she one of them she talked about like needle, scissors, um, accoutrements that go with stitching and I watched her video and immediately <laughs> after I got done watching the video I went to Amazon and ordered this lamp this is the most fabulous lamp and being since I'm going to all the retreats I'm going to I decided I had to have it it does have a plug that plugs in here so it's not like it's battery or it's you need a plug it's by daylight um it was around seventy dollars ish um she talks a lot about it and i think it also has a connection for european plugs 
It has this magnifying glass here with a hot spot. Ooh, let me see. I can do this right here. This I especially wanted for doing over one. And it goes, this moves and this moves. So it's perfect for traveling. I mean, you can stick that in your suitcase. I use it every night. And sometimes when you have an overhead light on, it's by daylight. Um, sometimes when you have an overhead light, the person in the same room gets a little bit of glare if you don't have it angled exactly right. And so this one I can set on my chair or my table by my chair and angle it so that, you know, it goes. So it not only goes this way, it goes this way. So you can angle it however you need to. Highly recommend it. It's fabulous. Let's see. The only other thing that's going on, and I will try to have another video in about, well, let's say two weeks, maybe two weeks, because I want to show you those four pieces that I had framed, and we'll kind of look at where I am on my rotation. <laughs> that's not a rotation. My non-rotation rotation. rotation. <laughs> I guess when you're crazy, you're happy. I don't know. Because <laughs> I think I'm a fairly happy person, but I guess it's because I'm crazy. Um, and not to insult anybody who really is crazy. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the other things we have going on is, because I have four new pieces coming, not a lot of wall space, and not a lot of wall space over this way, Let's see if I can do this. Okay, in the hallway, and I think it shows a little bit on my um, Christmas video. I think my husband took a hallway shot because I had all my Santas on top of I had a red shelf. It's fairly big that my husband had built for me years and years ago. I've had it in the kitchen. I've had it in the hallway. I've had it different places around the house. And I decided I wanted to put it in the bedroom and then I could hang a quilt on it and, you know, put other little stuff up on the top houses and dolls and all that kind of good stuff. So when he took it down, it entailed some fixing of the wall. <laughs> Cause you know, when you have something like that, that big, and especially in, strong enough to hold quilts, um, you practically have to use, you know, the giant heavy duty Molly bolt things, you know, <laughs> whatever they are. And so he's been patching the wall and he just repainted it. So the wall in the hallway and the hallway goes from our main living area down to the bathroom and bedrooms. And I'm going to put Say, uh, cross stitch down there that's not really sampler. So, for example, this one I probably will put in the hallway. It's it's has an alphabet, has a red house, but it's not what I would technically call a sampler. Same with the one that's up here. And then, and I have other ones like that that are Blackbird and adorable. I love them, but I want to do that whole wall in cross stitch. Then whatever comes off of these few walls, I'm going to replace with just reproduction samplers. I say reproduction because some of them may not be reproduction, but they have a sampler. It's not Mildred and Mildred. It's Margaret and Margaret. It just hit me. So the one I showed you at the very, very beginning, Sarah Turner is Margaret and Margaret. Finally, the brain kicked in. <laughs> anyway, so this one will stay, this one will stay, and I probably will rearrange because I have other ones on other walls. I have ones on easels. 
but I'm going to try to, um, you know, it's like rearranging the furniture. Sometimes you just have to get a new look. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's one of the changes I'm going to make. I think that's all I have. I'm looking at my notes. Um, I think I've kept you long enough. <laughs> the crazy lady. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing. My husband said, well, I think I owe you a couple hundred, not a couple hundred, but more than one steak dinner. And I said, well, how about when I get to a certain number, you just buy me a new couch. He's like, hmm, maybe. So, see, keep subscribing. I might get a new couch. I need a new couch. Anyway, it's all fun. So anyway, I hope you have a great stitching week. Um, I hope you survive your weather. It's been cold here for Jacksonville. I think today's in the 40s, and we're supposed to have maybe a freeze tonight. But it'll be back to 75 or 80 on Saturday. So um, I don't mind it hot as long as it's not humid. When it starts getting really humid, got to be inside. But I hope you have a great stitching week. Um, hope life is going well for you. And if it is, just praise the Lord. <laughs> Love you. Oh my gosh, I forgot. One more thing. Um, I mentioned at the end of my video in whatever, first part of January, whenever I did that one, about my husband's shaker boxes. And we had a tremendous response. And we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He is in the process, and he ordered the wood. Oops, something fell. He ordered the wood. He's, you know, getting the garage all set up. Um, some of the days when it's really cold, he's not really out in the garage working, but he's definitely working toward getting the um, boxes. I wanted to show you, he has six, he's going to have six sizes. Five, This is a five. This is what about the size of my head? <laughs> so that's a five. This no. This is a five. This is a four. Smaller than a five. And he'll be selling them individually. Maybe as a set. I'm not sure. All that's to be worked out. So five, no, let's see, five, four, three. This is an ot, which is a fancy way of saying zero. This is one, two, three, four, five. Let me pull back a little bit so you can see all of them. Ot, one, two, three, four, five. So um, he's in the process of setting up a website and email and all that stuff. If you're still interested, and he hasn't determined the price, but it's going to be competitive. Um, with some of the other people that make shaker boxes. Go to saltboxwoodworks.com. That's his website. And on in the website, it says um, if you want to be notified or to sign up for emails or something to that effect. He's going to shoot me because I'm not quoting it exactly. Oh, well. Saltboxwoodworks.com. Go to the, click the, where it says the information or to find out. Anyway, and then when he has available, you'll be notified. So he's working on them. Um, we've had some other crazy stuff. My daughter's husband, he's in the Naval Reserves as well as a full-time job. And he was gone for, I don't know, a week, week and a half. 
during that time, her plumbing backed up. And so my husband was over there helping. And so there's been a lot of stuff that's kind of, you know, gotten in the way. But he's, and it took a long time for him to get the wood because it's all cherry and he ordered most of it. So anyway, didn't want to forget about the boxes. <laughs> Let's try. Anyway, so that's saltboxwoodworks.com. Just go to that. If you have any questions, that should be able to answer it. So thank you for your interest. And hopefully you'll be able to get a box eventually or two or three or four or five. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.